Hi everyone, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me 5V. I'm back. <laughs> Today we're going to show you how to install drip irrigation in your garden beds and explain why fall is the best time to do it. So a lot of you may be wondering, like, why would you be putting in drip irrigation right now? It's fall, you're shutting down your garden for the year, but there's actually a number of really good reasons why fall is the perfect time to install your drip irrigation. Keeping in mind that you do not have to blow out your drip irrigation lines, at least in our area, right, Christopher? Yeah, they're going to be fine over the winter, even after we run the test stick on them. So I think one of the best reasons to install drip irrigation in the fall is because there are no plants in the way. You've cut back your perennials, your shrubs have uh, shed their leaves, and there's no annuals in the ground. So you kind of have a lot more space and free range of the area to kind of get perspective on where the drip can go. Yes. And the other important thing, if we were to do this in spring, which would be perfectly fine for that reason, we might run into bulbs. So if we put this drip in now, the bulbs can grow up right in between the tubes. And I think also you've had, I mean, us particularly have had a full growing season of seeing what needs water, what doesn't need water, what would need some supplementary water. Like we have a rose over here that definitely could use a little supplementary water. Oh, yeah. And so we've had a growing season with our garden. We've seen what does fine uh, with rain from mother nature and what needs a little extra water. And so, between all of those factors of having a clear view of where it can go, uh, a clear path of getting it there, and already having a season of experience, not having to blow it out in the wintertime, and it'll be all set up and ready to go in the spring. I mean, could there be a better time to install drip irrigation? Yeah, and I mean, it's a little chilly out today, but it's not a terrible day to be working out here. It's a little chilly out, but uh, Christopher is our drip irrigation expert. So just like he is the bulb planter and the coral ball pusher, <laughs> uh, so I will be assisting him, but he's going to walk you through the easiest, most straightforward way to get drip irrigation installed in your garden, especially if you've never done it before. Absolutely. This is a pretty foolproof, pretty easy way of approaching drip irrigation. Yeah. And pardon my voice. I am on the mend. Thank you for the well wishes. Oh yeah. I still hear it. That's kind of funny. <laughs> All right. Let's go do some drip. Yeah. Let's get, let's get dripping. Let's drip. Okay. So. Drip irrigation. Oh, that's gonna be this is gonna be funny. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, drip irrigation, at its core, is just the easiest way of targeting water to the roots of your plants without overhead watering. For us, the reason that we do drip irrigation is our summers aren't consistently wet. Sometimes we'll have a month of no rain, and we're out here supplementing with the hose, and that just doesn't cut it. So the basic. <clears throat> difference between these two tubes. This is your half inch black poly tubing. It has no holes. So when I think of this, this is the getting the water to the spot you need it hose tube. I'm probably going to say that interchangeably. And it doesn't have holes, so you're going to have to add emitters to it. Then you have your brown drip tube. This has holes that are spaced, in this case, every 18 inches. Sometimes they're spaced every six inches, sometimes it's 12. Something I have learned the hard way over the years when I'm purchasing drip tube is to make sure that these emitter holes are the correct distance that I'm looking for. Like this one that I purchased, this has the every 18 inches. I find 18 inches works well if I'm just trying to cover an area with some water, but these aren't plants that need a ton. These holes are half gallon per hour emitters. And I'll talk about emitters in two seconds. Um, so the plan for today is not to use any of the smaller tubes. Those smaller tubes are things we might make a ring around a tree with, or we might use them in a container. This is really more for in ground, for making it as easy as possible for us to water our major shrubs and perennials. Then here in my trusty garden hod, I love the word hod. I think that's so funny. We have our other equipment. And at first, yes, this is going to look completely overwhelming and crazy. But these are our couplers. This is how we connect our little drippers to each other. This one, for instance, is a T. Then there are the straight couplers. And the only other one I use is an elbow. 
Um, these are pretty self-explanatory for what they do. And then the other thing that's important to have are your emitters. Put this down. The emitters are the way that we're going to target the water coming out of our black poly. These are one gallon per hour, which is the black ones, and the ones that have the blue are the quarter gallon, or half gallon, I'm sorry. There are also red ones that are two gallon per hour, but we're not going to need any of those for today. And I figure bring out only the tools you need, less confusing. There is one really fun thing. These are called goof plugs. You snap one of these off, and this is for when you put a hole in the wrong spot. It happens all the time. Don't worry about it. You've got your goof plugs. There's probably a hundred of these somewhere scattered around our garden right now. But this is how Drip becomes foolproof. What I'm going to do is I'm going to link everything in the order I use it in the description box to try to make some sense of it. I know there's a lot of pieces. This is how the water starts from the hose bib. It's got a pressure regulator. It has other pieces Does in the middle. Does it have a backflow preventer? Backflow preventer. Thank you, Eric. And then it has your little connector that's going to connect it to our tubing. Only other step that's important for us is a quick connect. We use quick connects on everything because how much easier is it to be able to remove things and leave this attached to the hose bib. So Eric, come on over here. I'm going to explain. Are you going to show us it all set up? Yes, this is an all set up one. You can see our half inch drip tube. This is the limelight hedge and the entire east side border, as well as this area behind me with the oak leaf hydrangeas and the blood good Japanese. I maple. did show them this in the last video where I did forget to turn it off. So. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> we have to figure out some way to put it on a timer or an app on our phone. Okay, there. that's another thing you can do. You can put all of this on a timer. They have ones that attach to your phone. They have manual ones. I have them in the garage. Honestly, I forgot to put them on this year. So if you come in close here, Eric, you can see we have our Quick Connect. We have our... This thing... <laughs> I I know there's a pressure really... regulator, backflow mm. preventer, and hooker upper, and that connects to this black tube, which goes down. We are going to be burying this under the stone today, so we don't have to look at it so much. And here's the I best. I mean, if part. you don't want to bury, you don't have to. I mean, we've never had it buried, and it's been years. So I know, but I feel like you know we're advanced now, so we should probably bury our drip tube. The only piece of maintenance you have to do for this, at least for us, we don't have hard water, so we don't really ever need to replace these tubes. At some point we might have to, but these have been in for a couple of years and they're perfectly fine. All I'm gonna do is dis disassemble from my Quick Connect and take this piece in the garage for the winter. The reason I do that, there's little parts in it and it was recommended to not leave this out. Everything else can stay. The cool part, all you gotta do is pull this little guy down and this tube will slide right off. Very easy. Um, we don't use any of the clamps. Our water pressure is just not that high. If we have, um, pretty standard suburban water pressure and it doesn't blow the tubes apart. So I have never had to do that before. So for today, we'll take, put our quick connect in and we're going to run our black tubing under the rocks towards Eric. We're going to go under this piece of metal through the mulch since the grass hasn't fully formed up against the new pieces of the patio we're going to run our black tubing right through here and begin our grid that's what it is yeah and this is the area we are installing today the newest garden right yes and then we'll continue around doing our whole grid do the same plan right here underneath the grass. It's just easier than digging underneath the new terrace or patio area. And then we'll just finish up around here. Everything else is on drip in the garden. So yeah. this is the last that's not on drip. This is the last. <clears throat> so all I'm doing here is taking my trusty half moon edger 
and creating a nice little channel, I don't know, three inches deep or so, just so that we don't have to ever worry about it again. And or, I'm gonna like move some of this stone out of the way to feed the pipe through, one of my favorite tasks to do, <laughs> shoveling <Norm> stone. <laughs> Normally when there's a drip irrigation project happening is when uh, Eric has something very pressing to do elsewhere. So today is very special because Eric is getting his hands involved in the drip irrigation. So here is a close-up of the trench. I just got to go underneath this little metal edging that separates the stone from the garden bed. And then it'll come through here. This is going to be the black tubing that doesn't have any holes in it yet. Yep. And then it'll pop up here and then we can create a grid system throughout this bed. Keep it really simple. And then next spring, as things go in, we can build off of that system and target water any new installs or target water any annuals or anything like that. So here I have my 500 foot long spool. <laughs> <laughs> you might not think you need 500 feet, but you'd be surprised how much of it you use. You know why I know that is because I have gone through a lot of the 100 foot spools and there are more money. Yeah, it's cheaper to buy the 500 foot. So I will say, you know what I'm thinking? Doing this in warmer weather will lead to that being more malleable. <laughs> oh, yes. Good point. Thank you for mentioning that. In the in the summertime or spring, even if you leave it out in the sun, this gets really kind of mushy almost and you can put your emitters in much easier. All right. Should I put down the camera and help you? <clears throat> this I can do. Okay. So I'll show you how simple this is. And this is only if you have this kind of setup. Oh, and do we need landscape staples for this? I have lots of landscape staples. That goes in here. Oh, you're going under. You're threading the needle. Oh, I think our lawnmower is going to, our neighbor is going to start mowing their lawn. They do have a way of knowing exactly when we're outside. <laughs> I think they're kind of just like us. They work full-time jobs and got to get it done on the weekend when they can. So that looks is. great. Look at, it's just going right through. All right. So this is our hardest part of the infrastructure, I guess you could say one tool for this entire project this is a cutter and an emitter hole punch in one this tool saves you so much time and it comes in fun colors like <laughs> bubble gum so first put my piece of the quick connect on Make sure your water's turned off for this part. I know. And honestly, we're going to just test it all, make sure it works, and then unhook it for the season. Yes. So let me just kind of loosely measure what I, how much I need. And then you put your tube in the cutter. Is there a reason why you're cutting off so many feet? Because I pulled too many feet through. Oh. Simple as okay. that. Okay. It, it does go back. The other way if you if you were worried about saving feet yes i have 500 feet <laughs> so now i will wrestle this on i have to stand for this and that's it it's on and then put it into our quick connect and hit it okay so we have that attached now. The, I mean, that's the hard part done, really. Okay, Eric, do you want to put some staples? I'm going to staple here. this into the ground and cover it up. Whilst while... I keep tucking? Yes, you okay. tuck. I will cover it up. Oh, I forgot my kneeler. Uh-oh. The other good thing about doing it this time of year is 
the grass is going to fill right in over the top of it. Yeah, that's true. You're not even going to be able to see this. Ta-da! <laughs> so the next step is to start making cuts and using emitters. Okay, so now we have made our way to the first piece of the bed. We have our black drip tube exposed, and we know that doesn't put out any water yet. So we have to start creating our grid. The other important thing to remember is what actually needs water. We have catmint here. Catmint's never gonna need water from us. So I'm not gonna put an emitter on that one. We're gonna run a line straight up here, and then we'll put an elbow in that takes us along the back. That's gonna give me the ability to put water on the Sprinter boxwood, but I don't need to put water on this grass. This grass is perfectly fine. But we did learn this season that we definitely need to put water on these winterberry, very heavy golds. Yes. They are much thirstier than we anticipated. So my plan is actually, I'm looking and I see there's a perfect straight line that goes between the very heavy golds. So if I put my elbow in front of the sprinter and not behind the sprinter, I can run my line straight through there and we'll get our water where we need it. First thing we got to do here is cut. I'm going to cut so that when I put my T in, one of the T's will send more water that way and one's going to go this way. And then we wrestle, wrestle, wrestle to put that back in. Beautiful. Also, now is a good time to not forget your stakes because this is going to be your best friend because these tubes are flexible and they're going to fly all over the place while you're working. But that'll keep me in the right spot. I happen to have this piece pre-cut from another project, so not going to waste it. I'm going to use this black poly line. Wrestle, 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 wrestle. Steak. We'll bring that here. And we know we want it to get pretty close to the root ball because I want to put an emitter there. Are we going to use an L there or just kind of curve the black tube? I'm going to use an elbow because that'll allow me to get very close to the root ball where I put my first emitter. Okay. Cutter. Coming elbow. close first. Some cutting action. <laughs> so I'm going to cut here. And pop in an elbow. Save this piece for later. So how many feet of black tubing are you thinking we're going to lay? Well, where, where visually, where are we going down to in the bed? This next line is going to go all the way to the sugar shack. I'm going to connect to there and then it weaves in between these plants. All right, so we cut a length of black tubing to get us down to the sugar shack button bush. And now I will connect that here to our L. And then we're kind of weaving through this aruncus. This is, is this blue mohawk aruncus? Yes. Yeah, this is one of those annual grasses from Proof of Winners that actually happens to be a perennial for us. Boxwood don't need a ton of water, so I'm going to use my half gallon per hour emitter. 
And now on the tool, there's the punch portion. You can see that. And I'm going to line it up so it's facing the plant. Punch. And I like to take the blue side, push it through the hole. And just like that, we have irrigated a sprinter boxwood. Amazing. It's, it's that simple, folks. <laughs> it's just kind of piecing it all together. So what I'm going to do now is kind of wiggle these around. I want one to be here. Yeah, we well, want to get lots of water on these winter berries next season because we missed out on berries. Yeah. One due to frost and two due to not right. getting enough water. And by the way, I know that, you know, a wavy line doesn't look much like a grid, but it's going to act just like it. And it is flexible tubing, so do what you got to do. Oh, and this is Mr. Poppins that pollinates them. Pollinates them, yeah. What here for the spilled wine. I think the pink mink definitely needs some irrigation. Yes. For sure. How about that? Ooh. Oh. We're tangled in a branch. These bee bomb will not need irrigation. <laughs> that just popped right back out of the ground. That was funny. That's I think okay. it was like something to do with the way it was twisted. It made it pop back out of yeah, the ground. Yeah, it did. Yep. And then we'll put our last bit here to that sugar shack. And it was the perfect length. Look at that. Okay, so we've kind of got this serpentine drip going through. That we can build off of. Should we put the rest of the grid on and then put emitters? Are you asking me? <laughs> I no. think we should do the grid first and then, then put emitters. emitters at the end. Good thinking. Okay, so our next task focus, our next task to focus on is getting these three little lime punches irrigated. Irrigated. <clears throat> so this is going to be a little mini grid. I'm going to take my big old spool here, connect that in here, wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. I love these barbed tees. It makes such a difference not having to clamp them. Okay. And is it really a wrestle or is it easier than you're leading us on to believe? Without gloves on, my hands will get really sore from that Oh, wrestling. so it is a wrestle. It's it's a bit of a wrestle. I couldn't tell if you were like... Uh, being dramatic. Not being dramatic. <laughs> like, you know. Entertaining. Oh, okay. I see. Woo. Okay. So I know I'm going to want a T here, and you'll see why in one second. Ha ha. See, here's that piece I cut off before. Never throw away your extras. You can always go back and edit. You can add, just cut your line and add it to it. Eric, did we ever have a clear answer for why a grid system is better? Than one? I, I would think, I mean, to me, it makes sense. It's better because you're sending the same water back to itself. So it keeps the pressure higher. I mean, to me, it makes sense that way. I think you're right. Do we need another like L right there in front of this front one? Or you're going to size control it what do you mean i'm just gonna make them both a little smaller oh 
Could you hand me another tea? Please. Yes. Uh, can I toss it to you? You can. Once the <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Once a tea is on, it can be a pain in the butt to take off, but it's not impossible. I usually use um, a knife of some kind very carefully and you can cut the tube off. So now we know we have... I see the vision. Black poly right in front of each of those bits. And we can add emitters to each one now. Correct. So now I get my one gallon emitters. And all this drip is going to be covered when we do our fresh layer of compost in the spring. So, so another I'll... great reason to do drip in the fall is that you can just kind of do it and leave it. And then in the spring, it gets covered with your compost or your mulch, whatever you use. We use mulch or we use compost as mulch. And now we know we've targeted our root ball exactly where we want that supplemental water. And imagine if this was fully leafed out, how much more difficult this might be to accomplish. You're not wrong. And if you accidentally break a branch, no big deal. All right. All right. So I feel good. We've got these taken care of. So now we're just going to run. Oh, look, if I work really now, if I re wrestle it, this will show you how tight they really are. The water pressure really isn't enough to push that out. Eric, talk a little bit about these perennials in front and why we're not so worried about them. Sure. So right here, we have divided and transplanted some salvia. I want to say it was, it's not pink potion. It's um, purple profusion. No, purple illusion. Purple illusion. Prof it's purple profusion. Purple. It, I don't know. It's a salvia <laughs> that we divided and transplanted. Not too worried about it. It's going to get a little bit of overhead water from the sprinklers for the lawn. So it should be fine. And we can worry about that next year because we're just going to get like the big stuff going this fall, right? Yes. I think it's better to have our infrastructure, our main grid in. And then next year we can talk about quarter inch tubes and all kinds of other emitters that are out there. This is the basics. This is the foundational drip irrigation that we do everywhere. All right, so what's the plan next? So I'm going to connect the spool, the big long spool of black here. I'm not worried about this tree. This tree is growing beautifully. It does not need supplemental water. I'm going to bring this around here. Purple pillar, Rosa Purple Sharon. pillar. You can uh, see the deer really liked the bottom half of that one. Yes, they enjoyed that. <laughs> Get a flattering angle of you, but you're just jumping around. <laughs> this is not the angle. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. It hurts my <laughs> lungs. <laughs> All right, so we're weaving it through there. Our next goal is to get them around these Estacia Vi transplants. Roses in our garden love a ton of water. I feel like they're one of our most water hungry shrubs that we have. I would agree. So I've just put some of the black poly tubing through the three Eustacia Vi roses. They're going to stay just like this for now. They are very water hungry. So I'm going to do something a little more advanced in the springtime with um, quarter inch tubing. But for now, they're going to stay just like this. Yeah, this is kind of setting it up for success in the spring. So we've got our line through the roses. And now we're going to hit this curve of boxwoods. And what I'm going to do is switch us from the black drip tubing into the brown drip tubing that has the emitters every 18 inches. The reason I'm going to do that is these boxwoods on the inside curve are pretty close to 18 inches apart and get this that will give them the half inch or I keep saying half inch half gallon of water per hour they need. So it'll save us on some emitters and hole punching. Basically, I mean, that's kind of the the gist of what the brown does. It just it can cover the area for you. So I'm going to use a straight coupler. I think these are the hardest because you don't have as much to hold on to. And then I'll put them together like so. Is 
the fighting you. The brown is always harder to work with, unless it's warm. Do we need to get a blow dryer out? <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. I'm just gonna take some staples and weave this around. Awesome. <clears throat> There's a bit of a hill here. So what'll be nice is some of this water will trickle down to the foxgloves. Kind of cover a few areas at once. Oh, and we got to get that uh, Earth Angel Rose watered. Correct. That, I think, was one of the most notable, noticeable things. Uh, I would season. agree. This rose did this. And if you saw what the Woolerton Old Hall that was planted at the same time did on drip irrigation, it's a world of difference. So yeah. it's going to be a big help in the spring when I do the more advanced rose drippage. So we're going to switch back to our black tubing now and go right along this edge here. The edge? Well, we're going to go along the edge so that we can get the Sting Arbor Vitae and the Shad Blow, but it'll allow us to skip these catmen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are we going to go in between here, though? Because all of these Invincible Lace need drip, too. That we're going to get with this piece that's underneath the Sugar Shack. Oh, so they're going to run parallel to each other. Correct. Gotcha. We need that sun to come back out. I know. Warm this up. Well, I got it. You got it? I got it. All right. So. It's going to go right in between here. Oh, yeah. We don't want to water the catman. I think these spireas are fine, honestly. They are. Could you bring the spool to the far end? Sure. What's your spool of thought on drip irrigation, Christopher? <laughs> My spool of thought on drip irrigation is make it as easy as possible. It shouldn't be rocket science. I mean, I hope we're being helpful right now. <laughs> I think there's enough uh, content creators that make drip irrigation videos that I think if you watch everyone, you'll find the version you'll of it. You'll find the that version works. that works for you. Do I look like a natural? You're doing a really good job. I feel like I. So we're going in between the crop coop and the lace. And we'll do it in between the boxwood and those flavorette roses, which will be a little difficult. I know, but worth it. Okay. With the straight coupler, just to connect them. Maybe next spring we'll run a little offshoot onto this sprinter that you're kind of kneeling by. Yes. And then this is going to get pressed up against the lace. I'm excited for this Invincible Lace head. And so this is kind of like forming the outside of the grid. So anything we can build off of on either side. Yeah, we'll be OK. It'll have enough water pressure because it all comes back into itself right here. Oh, here we go. Perfect. I can show you how to use a goof plug. Did you goof? I did goof. So look, I have not lined these up properly. So what I'm going to do is put my one gallon emitter here instead of on this piece. Goof plugs. Let me zoom in on this. You pop out ugh, your one gallon emitter. You take your goof plug and you pop it in. I will say in the summertime when these are more flexible, it's hard to get the goof plugs in because the tube's so flexible. Well, we can save that one gallon you just ripped out and put it in, right? Correct. I'm going to put it right here. Look at the birds. Found the bird feeder. They're already enjoying it. They found that pretty quick this year. Yeah. I would say the fact that this sort of basic foundational drip irrigation happens so quickly, it makes it much less 
daunting of a chore. This next piece is going to be, well, the next section of garden is going to be quite easy. Why do you say that? Because we have a flow going. Oh. <laughs> so that's getting buried there. It's going to come around to this side. We're going to tee behind these catmint. And then let me untwist this a little bit for you. I feel like we're more than halfway done. Oh, we're way more than halfway done. Eric, you've done a very good job burying that line. I mean, I'm trying. You've got a great teacher. That's true. <laughs> so let's put another T in here. So we want that to go through there. So where's the tea going? Oh, you're going to send it between the Ancient Mariners. Yes. Okay. I'm going to send it. Between the Ancient Mariners, and then it's going to go behind the Tufts of Aha. Correct. But what about this sprinter here? It's going to go over there, and then there's going to be an elbow. So was, wait, where is it going? The black poly is going to go underneath the clematis through this rose here, and there'll be an elbow. Then it's going to go in a straight line behind the top stops. Oh, now I see what you're doing. I was unclear. So we're going behind the tough stuff, top fun hedge. And then it's going to end an elbow here under that. Okay. Now what? I need a tube. <laughs> oh, I just folded it to get it out of your way. Okay. <laughs> Oops, here Help. You go. <laughs> That's funny. I was trying to be helpful. And now you're going behind the sprinters. Oh my gosh. Is this working better than you expected? This side's easier, for sure. <laughs> we promised you guys a clear and easy, straightforward drip insulation video, and this is it. <laughs> so those catmen don't need anything. Right. I don't think the Midnight Masquerade Penstemon need anything. Although they didn't do a second flush of blooms this year. I wonder if it's because mm. they didn't have enough water. I think it's because they were babies. Personally. The honeysuckle definitely needs it. That is a thirsty honeysuckle. All right. So I did have to make a cut in my tube. Obviously, I've got to get underneath the trellis here. But we definitely want a ton of water underneath the honeysuckle. It's a very vigorous vine and it needs all the water and nutrients it can get. So now I'm just gonna weave this through these roses. Connect these through. And I'm gonna continue on in the same way around this entire section of the garden till I make a loop and then we'll move on to our next step. So what I've done here is run this black tube all the way in between the shrubs at the border of this bed and I'm going to connect it all together here at this original T. Oh, I didn't realize this rose had climbed up in there. Interesting. And then we're going to get a little creative to take care of the interior. So here, the quick fire fabs are on the center of the bed. So what I'm gonna do is put some T couplers here and on the other side and just connect them with some black poly. And I'm gonna do that in a couple places where I know the interior plants will need the water and they can't get it from that far away. Four more T's and we're done with this whole tube business to business so i'm going to cut in between here put my t in get that in there make sure this is under the branches and doesn't hurt anything awesome so then i'll put one here
Definitely helps to have a lot of pockets when you're doing this kind of work in the garden. Does the Duluth Trading Company have a fall garden coach? Because they have so many pockets in all of their stuff. Um, they do. I love their stuff. And I want one. I want the overalls. I'm just going to do it. I need them. Well, Christmas is coming. <laughs> And then just need to cut this piece and connect it in. Now we don't know if we're keeping these aronia here because. And look, I mean, they are so nice. They're just. I know. They're just candy for all the wildlife. They really are. All right. So we've got that grid in there, which is probably a little bit tricky to see. Um, and I'm sure we're going to need to expand it through some stuff next season. And now I think it's time to go ahead and put emitters on everything, right? And that's it, that's the whole process. Then we'll test it, make sure it works. The amount of water you're giving your plants and how long you run your drip and how many days you run your drip, it's so specific to each and every garden that showing you how we install everything is one thing, but we couldn't say how often or how long we run our drip because it changes yeah we might not run year. this drip for a month and a half next season if we're if we're rainy we're not going to run it at all but if we yeah. had a dry patch we might run it once a week for an hour and a half or something you know keep everything looking yeah happy and healthy i mean i do think it's important to water deeply less often yes so that roots go as deep as possible water. yeah and isn't this great? We don't have to do anything here because we have the brown drip tubing that has its emitters already. Gallon here and here and there. We definitely need these invincible laces. Yes. To be. Gonna put one gallon on each. Eric, did you think this was gonna be more complicated since you normally don't see this process? No, I thought it was gonna be less complicated. <laughs> I think it's, I mean, it makes sense. I guess we've been doing it long enough or like watching videos about it long enough. But I mean, I get it. I understand how it all works. So, and hopefully, you know, you guys understand too. And please feel free to ask questions. Yeah. And we just wanted, you know, to give you the basics and show you that fall is a great time to do it because look at how cleared out the beds are. This hedge of Tough Stuff Top Fun is one I'm really excited about for next season. I'd say more than anything else in the garden right now, these are the potential showstopper. There's so much new growth at the base of them. Did you notice this? I did. I'm debating if I should add more compost around them, but their leaves seem to be falling directly on them, so it should be Right, fine. but also when we cover this, they're going to get mulched right in. All right, Eric, so I think what I'm going to do, continue on with this, put one gallons on things like the quick fire fab and half gallons on boxwoods. And that's the end of our project. Go ahead. All right, this is the moment of truth. I'm going to turn on our drip line to see if we can test it. Uh, you ready, Christopher? I'm ready. It usually makes a funny noise as it blows the air out. And once it reaches pressure, we already know we got to add some plumber's tape to that quick connect. Okay. So let's follow it over. I hear the noise. I hear the water going through for the first time. I see drip here. Good. Which is great. I see good dripping under that. The first time you put it on, it's really not that exciting. Well, drip in general is not exciting to watch. We just want to see if it makes it all the way to the other end or if anything blows or pops apart. You know what I mean? Yep. I hear it. I mean, it sounds great. I think we should run it for a little bit. Heading into for the rest. I think we should run it for an hour, probably. And that's a good idea. Water this stuff in. Yep, I see the water underneath still water. So we did it. What about tough stuff? They're doing great. Good job. Thanks. 
Well, thanks for joining us for some fall irrigation. Fall is a great time to get stuff done in your garden, whether it's installing some shrubs, trees, perennials, or drip irrigation. Uh, I hope you really learned something and enjoyed our time in the garden together. So again, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me 5B. Thanks for growing with us.